An historic inauguration, Westmore took the oath of office today to become Maryland's new governor, his plans for the state's future. Caught in the crossfire, a mother helping comfort a loved one was killed by a stray bullet at a D.C. restaurant. And commuter changes. News Force transportation reporter explains how construction could affect your drive to work. You're watching the News 4 Rundown. Thanks for joining us for the News 4 Rundown, our newscast streaming for you. I'm Sean Yancey, and today's top story is all about the beginning of that historic inauguration. For the first time in Maryland history, a black man is serving in the state's highest office. Wes Moore is now Maryland's governor. At today's swearing in, he acknowledged both the long road to this moment and what he says is a bright future moving forward. Maryland, our time is right now. Our time is now to build a state that for those who came before us that they fought for, and it's a state that leaves no one behind. This is not a slogan. It is the fulfillment of a hope. Maryland, it's time. Let's lead and let's do it together. This is Moore's first elected position. His longtime celebrity supporter, Oprah Winfrey, introduced him at today's event. News 4's Darcy Spencer has more on the new governor's policy goals. I, Wesley Watende Omari Moore. Democrat Wes Moore sworn in as the first African-American governor in the state of Maryland and only the third black elected governor in our nation's history. His hand on a Bible once owned by Frederick Douglass, a former enslaved Marylander who escaped to freedom and became an abolitionist leader. We're blocks away from the Annapolis docks where so many enslaved people arrived in this country against their will. And we are standing in front of a capital that was built by their hands. And that I will be faithful. Aruna Miller making history too as the first South Asian woman elected lieutenant governor in Maryland. Moore emerged from the state house with his wife Dawn and their two children as governor and first lady of Maryland. And from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you for the honor. Moore's inauguration was outside the State House on Lawyers Mall, which has a prominent statue of Maryland's first black U.S. Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall. Moore was introduced by Oprah Winfrey, a strong supporter during his campaign. And I know that with Wes Moore as your governor, Maryland's best days lie ahead. Moore's speech touched on topics from education, building an equitable economy, to ending child poverty to public safety. We can and we will support our first responders who risk everything to protect us and change the inexcusable fact that Maryland incarcerates more black boys than any other state in this country. Moore also spoke about protecting the Chesapeake Bay, saying clean energy will define the state's economy. And we will put Maryland on track to generate 100% clean energy by 2035 and create thousands of jobs in the process. There was a 19-gun salute and a Maryland Air National Guard flyover. Let us all Music sung by Maryland students. The inauguration attended by local, state, and national dignitaries and Marylanders from across the state here to witness history firsthand. Moore and his supporters will continue the celebration this evening with the People's Ball. It's set to get underway at 7 o'clock at the Baltimore Convention Center. In Annapolis, Darcy Spencer, News 4. One of Westmore's policy proposals is to create a year-long service option for high school graduates. The goal would be to help those graduates become future leaders and public servants. Well, to put this historic moment into context, Westmore is the fifth black person to serve as governor nationwide and only the third to be elected governor. Democrat Douglas Wilder was elected as Virginia's governor in 1990. Deval Patrick was elected governor of Massachusetts in 2007. The only other contemporary time black governor was David Patterson, who served as New York's governor after Elliot Spitzer resigned amid a scandal back in 2008. Two other black men ascended to the governorship in the 1800s in the state of Louisiana after an injury and the resignation of the governor. A black woman has never served as governor in any state. You can look for complete coverage of Westmore's inauguration here in the NBC Washington app and on NBCWashington.com. We have new video now of a police chase in Cecil County, Maryland that turned deadly. <laughs>
Maryland's Independent Investigations Division just released the dash cam and body worn camera footage of the pursuit on December 31st. State police were called to I-95 for reports of an erratic driver. Police say they chased the driver for about nine miles before the driver lost control on an exit ramp and crashed into a tree. <laughs> Can you hear me? They identified the uh, victim as Julie Clark of New Jersey. She was the only one in the car at the time. Police say the investigation is ongoing. Gun violence has shattered another family in the district. Dale Henson, a 54 year old mother, was killed last night. She was picking up dinner for her niece, who had just lost her boyfriend in a shooting over the weekend when she was shot. News 4's Amy Cho spoke with the victim's grieving daughter. A caring mom who loved spending time with her family. That's how Dale Henson's daughter describes her. Henson was picking up food last night at Moonstar Carryout on Benning Road Southeast when she was caught in the middle of crossfire and killed by a stray bullet. And she was funny. Um, she was joyous. She just wanted to live. DC police say last night a man opened fire at the restaurant, shooting another man and a teen boy. According to police, the teen boy pulled out a gun and started shooting back, hitting Dale Henson in the head. I just want everybody to know that she was a loving person. And she ain't deserve this. She ain't deserve to go like that. Tamika Keys knows what it's like to lose a loved one to gun violence. This past Sunday, she says her cousin's boyfriend was also shot and killed in Southeast DC. It's why Dale Henson was at the restaurant getting food to comfort her niece. Well, she was just trying to help my cousin grieve. She was trying to make sure she was eating and doing everything she was supposed to do. This morning, you could still see bullet holes in the door of the restaurant. Police say they're still looking for the original shooter and that the teen who returned fire will be charged with murder. Tamika Keys has a message for both of them. Because you shouldn't be shooting when older people or kids are around, period. You shouldn't be shooting, period, but most definitely not when older people or kids are around. A plea from a family that's seen far too much loss in less than a week. Amy Cho. News 4. DC police say they have surveillance video of the shooting from the gas station next door that they were combed through for any clues that could lead them to the suspect. Tonight, two men are under arrest, accused in multiple armed robberies of taxi drivers around Langley Park. Police linked Omar Hernandez and Jose Linares Hernandez to at least five robberies. The crimes happened between mid-December and the start of this month. If you have any information about the robberies, call Prince George's County Police. The Purple Line Rail project between Bethesda and New Carrollton, Maryland, has been plagued by cost concerns, delays, and what some describe as mismanagement. We have two big updates now on the project. Transportation reporter Adam Tuss is in Chevy Chase, where a new bridge is about to be fit into place. Yeah, well, you can see this pedestrian bridge behind me here. It was assembled on site, 178 feet long, 22 feet wide. It weighs a lot. And so these two massive cranes on either side of Connecticut Avenue are going to hoist it into place over Connecticut Avenue tonight. And that'll mean part of the road has to be shut down. For a project that's faced serious delays and criticism, this new bridge being lifted and moved over a bit and then fit into place later tonight, that's significant and there will be traffic impacts. We are closing Connecticut Avenue in both directions near Chevy Chase Lakes uh, from about midnight until three in the morning. So hopefully most people will be asleep during that time. Residents have watched all of this unfolding, and some are graciously putting up with the construction. It's a bit of a pain, but I really think it's a necessary pain. Okay, I mean, transportation around here is horrible. While this new bridge will carry the very popular Capitol Crescent Trail, another controversy is brewing in Bethesda, where there are now doubts about building a planned trail tunnel to run alongside the Purple Line under Wisconsin Avenue. Cost is the major concern. Montgomery County Executive Mark Elrich. This is more than the cost of an elementary school. I mean, there's so much we need to do with that money. And if I put 85 million into that tunnel right now, that's other projects that aren't going to get done. Meanwhile, some residents aren't as forgiving about all the delays, disruption and displacement with the Purple Line. I think it's like Montgomery County's big dig for Boston. It might be great in the end, but oh my goodness. At least for tonight, some visible progress on this long delayed project is coming. Along the Purple Line, Adam Tuss, News 4.
The Purple Line is expected to open in 2026. It is not clear when the trail next to the line will be ready. A reminder, you can catch news and weather updates anytime on Roku and Samsung TV+. Plus. Just head to your device's live TV section and look for NBC Washington DC News. On Roku, you can find us on channel 138 and you can find us on channel 1035 on Samsung TV+. Plus. Well, that'll do it for the News 4 Rundown. Thanks for joining us. I'm Sean Yancey. We hope to see you right back here tomorrow.